a lot of you have strong feelings when it comes to speakers and are adamant that towers are just always better than bookshelves. And while I tend to shy away from definitive statements like those, today we are going to pit the Sonus Faber Lumina 5 towers up against one of our favorite bookshelf speakers, the Lumina 2, in order to see how the two really compare. <laughs> No doubt, Sonus Faber knows how to make a drool-worthy speaker, and their Lumina series is proof positive of that. The Italians spared little expense in making their Entry Point series stand out as some of the just better-looking speakers available on the market today. The Lumina 5 is the largest tower speaker in the line, sporting two 6.5-inch woofers, a single 6-inch mid-range driver, and a 1-inch tweeter. And while the 5 may appear sealed, it's not. It's actually downward firing, and that port is hidden by the speaker base, which means you need to use the included spikes in order to let the speaker breathe. The 5's four drivers and ported cabinet combined for a reported frequency response of 38 hertz to 24 kilohertz, which is nearing full range territory and in some instances may negate the need for a subwoofer in some rooms. Real quick, you may have noticed that I swapped out the included spikes with some of my isoacoustic feet just in order to protect our concrete floors. Doing so didn't make a dramatic impact on the speaker's overall sound or its measurements, so go with what works best for you. Getting the fives to sound their best wasn't difficult. Their bottom port allowed me to set them a little bit closer to our front wall, so I think you're going to find placement fairly flexible. Possessing a sensitivity of 89 dB into a nominal 4 ohm load, the speakers aren't too difficult to drive. And I know hearing 4 ohms may scare off some of you, as not all amplifiers or receivers are rated to 4 ohms. Not to worry, our tests proved that everything from the Marantz 8015 receiver to our budget reference Audiolab 6000A play on up to the new SUG. G700 Mark II integrated from Technics were all great pairings, with the Technics being my favorite. So what can you expect? Well, none of the Lumina speakers, whether we're talking about the fives or our favorite bookshelves, the Lumina twos, are neutral. They have a sound, a character, one that is easily heard throughout the line, though surprisingly, each speaker has their own unique interpretation. What you will find in all of them is a mild injection of bass energy, followed by a largely neutral but still articulate and detailed mid-range presence with a boost in the treble, though nothing too great as to come off as aggressive. Unsurprisingly, the large five towers have more bass presence than the twos. This is clearly evident when doing a quick sweep from 20 to 20, where we can see the five plays down to about 30 hertz with some authority. Additionally, the tower is linear, and as we transition to the tweeter, there is just this little injection of energy or presence nearing 20 kilohertz, which gives the Lumina a more detailed sound. Charts are all well and good, but as we know, the listening experience doesn't always align with what the data shows. Thankfully, that's just not the case here. The Lumina 5 sounds pretty much how its in-room response would lead you to believe. Well, mostly. In direct comparison to the stellar Concept 50 from Q Acoustic, one thing that immediately becomes apparent is that the 5's cabinet is in no way as inert as the Concept 50. And that resonance results in bass notes having just a little bit more life to them, T talking specifically about the surrounding air in bloom. Now, when pushed, this can translate to a bass response that can be somewhat boomy in spots, but nothing as egregious as, say, the Klipsch R800F, which is positively wooly. I actually really like the Five's bass. It has a more live sound compared to the overly dampened and exacting bass of the Concept 50s. Using the drum riff that opens Gas Head Goes West by live, in real world terms, kick drums are going to have more snap and presence through the Sonus Faber compared to the Concept 50. Tonally, the mid-range of the fives is exceptional and exactly what I've come to expect from the Lumina line. Intelligibility is high. Same goes for detail and articulation. There is a presence to this speaker's mid-range that helps to put front men and women center stage, which I love. But because the speaker's cabinet isn't as inert as others in its class, it's possible that certain vocal ranges and instruments can expose some chestiness. This was most noticeable when listening to David Gray's acoustic album, Lost Songs 95 to 98. It's not a deal breaker, but when A being the Lumina 5 against the Concept 50, you can hear a difference, and that difference is in the cabinet. I love the DAD tweeter Sonus Faber uses throughout the Lumina line. It balances detail and airiness with real palpable presence just 
brilliantly. Yes, the tweeter does have an injection of energy that some may deem as bright, but it's never shrill or fatiguing, at least not to me. The soft dome does not ring or shout the way some aluminum domes can, and it is that ringing or shouting that can often cause fatigue. So with the five, you get the right amount of accentuated detail and articulation with almost none of the drawbacks. And it all comes together in a soundstage that is big, bold, lively, but still very well appointed and detailed, provided it's in the recording. These towers image like absolute champions and have zero issues filling a large space. And the same is true of the speaker's dynamics. This is a fun, captivating, and lively speaker. It isn't PA style live a la Klipsch, nor is it forward in the same way newer Bowers and Wilkins are proving to be. The Lumina 5s falls somewhere right in the middle, which works for me. Dynamically, they are enjoyable at all volumes, retaining all of their detail and inflection even at lower volumes, the same as it does when listening at full tilt. In living with the Lumina 5s for the past few months, nothing about their performance has jumped out at me as something I feel you need to be made aware of. Compared to the other speakers in the line, specifically the Lumina 3 and the 2, the 5 is the better of the two towers, but maybe not the best Lumina speaker overall. Personally, I don't see a point in purchasing the Lumina 3. I'm not saying that it's a bad speaker, but it simply isn't different enough from the smaller and cheaper bookshelf. In our room, the 3's performance is nearly identical to that of the 2's, so you can save almost $1,000 by going with the 2's. Even after factoring in the cost of the stand, the Lumina 2's cost less than a pair of 3's. However, when comparing the Lumina 5 tower to the Lumina 2's, things get interesting. In our room, and to my ears, the larger tower is more neutral compared to the bookshelf. The base is deeper, but also less boosted. Sonus Faber is definitely juicing things a bit with the smaller Lumina 2's to make them sound, well, larger. That said, the 2's don't have the same internal cabinet volume, so resonance that can create chestiness is reduced with the smaller speakers, resulting in cleaner vocals. That said, Sonus Faber's use of the same tweeter with the Lumina 5, in my opinion, is better. The bookshelf has more top-end emphasis and energy. Christie loves it, but I find myself preferring the mild step back the tweeter takes with the towers. Now, you can always use your amp's tone control to bring the tweeter in alignment with the 5, but if you believe in keeping things au naturel, the tower is less bright in direct comparison. So about that tower versus bookshelf debate. When it comes to the Lumina series, in my opinion, the Lumina 2 is the best overall speaker in the line, especially if you already own a subwoofer. If you routinely like to spend time at Camp Basehead and are on the market for a fun, articulate, and stylish speaker to pair with your existing sub, just get the Lumina 2. If you're building from scratch and don't want to monkey with a separate subwoofer, then demo both the Lumina 2 and the 5. Just don't be surprised if you end up going with the 2s. Compared to our other reference towers, the Lumina 5 rests right smack dab in the middle. They're not as neutral as the Concept 50 from Q Acoustics, so if that matters to you, get the Concept 50s. If you like a bit of flavor to your sound, the 5s will be right up your alley. The value leader here is still the Polk R700. Sonically, the Lumina 5 is most like the R700, only with slightly less bass, a smaller cabinet, and better physical appearance. Tonally, the R700 is going to sound a little bit more laid back, dare I say warmer in comparison, but it's, it's not a night and day difference. The difference maker here is price. A pair of R700s are going to set you back just over two grand, assuming you don't buy them on sale, whereas the Lumina 5 inches closer to three grand for the pair. Stylistically, the Polks are just no match for the Sonus Fobbers, so if that's important to you, it should be an easy choice which one to get should budget allow. Wrapping things up, I thoroughly enjoyed my time with the entire Lumina line and came away from the experience happy and confident that we made the right choice for us in choosing the Lumina 2s for our reference needs. That said, had we not reviewed the R700, not to mention the Concept 50, the Lumina 5 may have also found a home among our permanent collection because it is just a fantastic all-around loudspeaker with looks to match. But as with many things, timing is everything. If you're in the market for a three-way tower speaker and value exceptional style and have the budget to match, the Lumina 5 should be on your shortlist. So that's it. That is now my take on the Sonus Faber Lumina 5 towers and kind of the whole Lumina line. But before we go, what are your thoughts? Well, I just want to say you did a great job with that review. I just want to throw that out there. What? Yeah. Yeah, I don't care what anybody else has to say. <laughs> you nailed it.
Really? Wow. Yeah, wow. yeah. No, I, feel, I feel good. <laughs> you should. You should. <laughs> I, I'm i a huge fan of Sonos Faber. Yeah. And honestly, I enjoyed all three of the Lumina speakers. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. The Lumina 3 is kind of forgettable. I, I totally agree with you that Sonos Faber was looking to eliminate the fat. That's where I would start. Mm-hmm. But I can see someone who just doesn't like the look of speaker stands going with the threes. Exactly. And maybe that was Sonos Faber's intention all along. But beyond that, there there isn't enough uh, there isn't enough of a difference between the twos and the threes to justify spending more. Yeah, depending on the placement in your room or your just room in general, they may be exactly the same. I'm, I'm no BS. That's just the way it is. <laughs> for me, yeah. For me, once you pair a subwoofer to the Lumina Two, mm-hmm. again, that is what this is what I hear. Or where where I'm not hearing, I should say. And that's a significant enough difference between the twos and the big towers. The fives. Yeah, I'm not saying there isn't one. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that the difference is not big enough for me Mm -hmm. to spend the extra money on them. Yeah. No, I'm I'm with you. I think think a pair of twos, some good stands, and a sub, you will eclipse what the fives do on their own and likely even have more flexibility than what the fives afford you. So. I still I still like the fives. Sure, sure. Uh, but I, I do prefer the twos. Mm-hmm. But realistically, I mean, I think you could give me any of the Lumina speakers and I could be happy. Yeah. I know that makes the audiophile brain short circuit because they like <laughs> to live inside an episode of Highlander. <laughs> yeah. But, but that's where I stand. Yeah. As far as the Concept 50 mm-hmm. that we just reviewed. Let me guess. Your team Q Acoustics. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Thank you All for right. saying something I just could not spit out. Uh, <laughs> yes, I am Team Q Acoustics mm-hmm. because dialogue clarity is so important to me. Mm-hmm. And honestly, the 50s just sounded good all the time. Yep. But the Luminifies have that more live sound that I that I do really like. Yeah. It, it really wasn't an easy decision picking mm-hmm. between the two of them. Yeah. Again, because both could realistically make me happy. Mm-hmm. But like I said uh, about dialogue clarity, because we, we, we often use speakers for both two channel listening and for home theater. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I just get really tired of struggling to understand what some want, some actors are saying and mm-hmm. having to constantly look to you and say, what did they say? Yeah. Frustrates me to no end. So, yeah, yeah. And and I know it frustrates, it's got to frustrate you too. <laughs> well, one of the things to note about dialogue clarity, at least that we're noticing lately, or maybe we've noticed it, but we just haven't really called as much attention to it in our videos, is there is a direct correlation between clarity and cabinet construction and how the mid-range and tweeter roll off and both the Q Acoustics and the Mission 770, which you also felt were incredibly intelligible, um, they actually don't roll off or right around the point where the mid-range and the tweeter meet. They either remain consistent or even have just a little bit of bump there at, before the tweeter. Whereas every other speaker, even neutral ones, and I'm talking about like say even the Revel, as you near that tweeter, in the mid range, it starts its roll off into the high frequencies, so as never to seem fatiguing or bright. But it's it's not the boost around twenty kilohertz that I think some speaker companies, even Sonos Faber, believe is giving you detail. For me, it's more around that two K mark, and there's almost a one to one correlation with if there's a dip around two K, you have issues. But if there's if it's still online or reference. They're great. Just throwing that out there for some of you who are like, how do I really tell? Eh, you know, maybe that's one of the things to consider. Yeah. And, and if you don't struggle as much with these kinds of issues with understanding actor dialogue, mm-hmm. then, then you, you can just completely disregard all of that, that, all of that and go with whatever sound you prefer. Yeah. But I know that we do have a lot of people out there that watch our, our videos and mm-hmm. have let me know that they too struggle. Mm -hmm. So this could be something for you to consider. Yeah, Um, absolutely. But again, I, I liked, I like both. I like, well, I like all three of the luminous speakers, Mm -hmm. but again, choosing between all three, Mm -hmm. I, I would go with the two. Yeah. Um, 
Now, if we're talking about the R700, okay. Again, it's such a good value. I mean, oh yeah. I I still I still think Polk did something so amazing with that speaker. Mm -hmm. Um if I was determined to get a tower speaker, I I think I would get the Lumina 5s in the Walnut. I, I and it really just kind of comes down to um a finish option. I'm still mad that Polk discontinued the R700s in white. Dumb. Had they, yeah, so dumb. dumb. Big mistake. Dumb, dumb. Insert the uh, Julia Roberts scene. <laughs> <laughs> uh, had they not done that, this would be an easier call mm -hmm. since I personally like saving money when it comes to hi fi. Sure. Uh, but it's, you could really go either way. Mm -hmm. um, I think the R700s are probably more uh, compatible with more types of music. Yeah, maybe. You know, like maybe. depending on what style of music you like. Um, whereas the Luminas are going to be, they give you that little bit more of a live sound. So mm -hmm. depending on your style or, you know, your taste, yeah. you might find them at times more bright by mm -hmm. comparison. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the R700 is a lot more like the Concept 50 in that across the board, everything's going to kind of sound even and good. The 700s are going to play deeper than the 5s. They're yeah. going to have a little bit more bass than the 5s, and they may require you to up the ante a little bit with respect to your amplifier in order to control those dual 8-inch woofers. Um, something to consider. But both being downward firing uh, in terms of their ports, placement, surprisingly, they're both very flexible, which I love. And I found the 2s, it needs to be stated, the Lumina 2s, are down slash front firing. They fire down, but the flow port, which is the base that the, the bookshelf rests on, kind of projects that energy forward. Um, so they're very flexible in terms of placement as well. But um, yeah, I'm with you. The I want to say the fives are about seven eight hundred dollars more than the R seven hundreds. And I think stylistically, um, that added investment in price gets you to the fives. To the fives gets you a better looking speaker. I mean, it is furniture. It is art, and you know it's made in Italy, um, which may matter to some of you. And it and doesn't I, matter to us. It doesn't as matter much. to us. We don't care where a speaker is made. We just want it to be made competently and it sound good. And but the, the Sonos Faber has that elevated sort of wow factor um, that the R seven hundred, while stylish doesn't have and that may be worth it to some of you but i think if you're looking for the better more full range tower the r700 is more full range thus maybe again it's the better value oh i t i totally think that just based on the more common feedback i see in mm -hmm. our in our comments okay i could see more people finding the R700s to their liking mm -hmm. than the uh, Lumina 5s, mm -hmm. just because I think it is just maybe a little more common that people prefer something a little bit more neutral and um, more, more base. And, and that's what I was going to say. Oh, okay. Sorry. And more, and more and play a little deeper down low. Mm -hmm. um, and if you, if you, you know, if you're that kind of, if that's your cup of tea. Well, that is now our review of the Sonus Faber Lumina 5 Tower Speakers, really the entire Lumina series. So my question of the day for you is pretty simple, and that is which of the Sonus Faber Lumina speakers do you think is best or would work best for you? Do you agree with us? Are you on a totally other planet? It's okay if you are. Oh, and I also I have oh. a follow-up question of the follow -up day. Follow-up question. Uh, what is the next... Uh, Sonos Faber speaker you would like to see yes. on the channel, like from their other their other series yeah, or options. Yeah, because they're whatever. asking if we want to try anything else. So you help us pick. You help us pick. Uh, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Go ahead and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links Christy left for you down below, you know the drill. These are all great ways that you have shown your support for the channel, along with becoming members. Uh, super thanks. Um, a lot of you, thank you very much for doing that. And just hitting the like button and subscribing. All of it. 
helps to support the channel. And both of us thank you all very much for doing that. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile. That's it for us today. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you on the next video. Bye. Would you say it could be an in-game amplifier? You bite your tongue. <laughs> you take that back. You take, I am shut triggered. Shut the, shut the hell up. I am triggered. I am we, triggered. We can't use that word. We can't use that phrase for, yep. I, I've been told, for another five years. Another five years. Okay. Endgame, 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 endgame. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know I have fun with you guys.